Okay, Sylvia's here. Uh, part two of my weapons review. Last time I did the starter ships, the Kestrel and company, the Angie ships, and the Federation cruiser. Uh, this time I'm doing the Zoltan ships, the Manta ships, and the Slug ships, which is a uh, odd selection of races, but let's do it. All right, first we have the Abjicator, Zoltan ships. Zoltan ships, I think, are the most powerful ones for one simple reason, and that is the Zoltan shield. When you first go into combat, the Zoltan shield is active. It covers your ship in three non-regeneratable shield bubbles, essentially. I'm sorry, five non-regeneratable shield bubbles. Uh, iron weapons deal more damage to them as normal, but everything else works the same way. Uh, they are knocked out by beam weapons, which is worth mentioning. A mini beam will deal two points of damage to them. I think a halberd beam will knock one out entirely. The important thing is, though, that it blocks missiles. It also blocks hacking attempts, uh, I think it blocks mind control, and it also blocks uh, boarding drones, and boarding parties can't teleport in, unless they're from special events where they always say they have a super Zoltan shield bypass or something like that. The important part though is the Zoltan shield stops missiles from wrecking your day at the beginning, prevents a Mance's boarding party from popping over initially and prevents mind control or hacking from, you know, wrecking havoc on your ship right off the bat. The Zoltan shield is amazing. Uh, I have heard that there is some kind of random event that can get you a Zoltan shield on a non-Zoltan ship, but in all of the gameplays I've done, I have never seen that happen, so I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, if it's not, then only these three ships, the Abjicator, the Nother, Nother, and the Chernikov can have a Zoltan sh uh, shield, or if you use mods. The second huge benefit to Zoltan ships is the Zoltan crew members, who give you energy. So you can do less upgrades on energy, and also overcharge your weapon by just having those Zoltan crew members. This ship, right here, can only have a maximum of, I think it's 30 energy in it. This ship right here can have a maximum of 33 because of these three guys. So now, to the specifics of this ship. The first thing you want to do is get a replacement for your uh, your pilot, get him out of the cockpit and put him on shields where he can serve his purpose, because he can't give energy to the cockpit. That's basically true for all of these Zoltan ships too. Uh, Land of the ship is a little weird. This area up here is kind of awkward. Uh, you don't have a lot of event options. And then this section here, uh, if you have a drone bay, it goes here, I'm pretty sure, is a problem. Your Zoltan people have low HP, which makes fire not really a great option for them, and also makes borders not really a great option for them. If your engine room catches on fire, or has borders in it, you have to pull everybody out of your engine, your weapons, and your shield room, and then vent and let the oxygen come out. It's a little awkward. And you especially do not want to be pulling Zoltan crew members from the systems they man, because they're also providing energy. Uh... A Lido, as I mentioned in the previous one, isn't the greatest thing. It does give you a quick missile to deal some damage to the enemy weapons room or something like that, but I'd rather have the Artemis for the extra damage. Halberd Beam, though, is really good. Deals three damage, uh, I'm sorry, deals two damage, takes three energy. Decent charge up, but it's also got a pretty decent sized beam. You can do some real damage with the Halberd Beam, and it ignores some extent of shields, too. So you don't even need to use the Lido to take it down enemy shields in the first place. So that's that ship. Next we've got the Nother. Nother has a really weird layout. I don't like it. I dislike how the um, door control also opens up into an opening. With a Zoltan team, if you get boarded, you basically want to run one of your people, probably this guy because he's closest to it. You want to run one of your people over to the um, door control, lock them down, and then start suffocating them. But if they teleport over here, you can't open up this door to suffocate because A, your door control guy is going to suffocate, and then B, you need to open up the other side to let the air suck out of the hallway, and then they'll just walk right in and kill him. Awkward layout of the ship. I also, I just, I don't like it. I just don't like it. That said, three Zoltan crew members is amazing. This one starts with four weapons control, which is good. Ion blasts are decent weapons for knocking out shields and keeping random systems offline of the enemy ship. Pike beam, really long, not a lot of damage, but really long, hits lots of rooms, but no shield pierce. Uh, also synergistic, 16 seconds charge, 8 seconds charge, 
everything's kind of perfect right there. Chernikov is a really odd ship. <clears throat> Unlike your other ships, the Chernikov, four weapons slots and two drone slots, starts with drones. Also starts with four crew members, all of which is Zoltans. Again, you want to get this guy out of there and put him somewhere else. In this case, you probably want him on oxygen or on um, your drone control, providing energy there. Slightly awkward location. This whole area down here is hard to vent. <clears throat> I've had issues where people are here or things like that. It's just weird. And after you vent it, if your door control goes down, you got to walk through it and your probably means your clone bay is out of oxygen. I've had problems with it. This is a trouble spot, so just be aware if you have problems happening down here. It can get out of control pretty quickly. Um, ion charger and a anti-ship beam drone. You knock out the shields with the charger, use the beam drone. Problem with the charger is it can take out a ship with two shield bubbles, but you have to charge it to let it fire all three shots. Uh, if all three shots impact, uh, the first two will knock out a shield bubble, and then the third one will knock out a second shield bubble, and then your beam drone can go to town on the enemy ship, but all three have to hit. If one misses, you will not take out all uh, both shield bubbles. Uh, against one shield bubble, though, it's a fine weapon. So you need to upgrade it before you start running into enemies that have two shield bubbles, or at least get another weapon, too. Uh, ion weapons are kind of weird, though, with regular weapons, because they both operate differently. Uh, the odd part about this ship is, though, it doesn't start with enough energy to actually man all of its systems. I think without using the battery backup, which it does come with, in fact, a fully upgraded one is with, you can man, I think, the engines and half the shields, plus the weapons and the oxygen, or something like that. But you can't man everything, and you can't mo use the, um the drone without using the battery. So you kind of have to fire off your first shot with the, uh, the charger, knock out the shields, then hit the battery, then activate the drone. And until you hit the battery, your ship's either going to not have shields, not be fully maneuverable, or not have oxygen. So it's a little awkward at first. And also, it comes with very little energy upgrades in the first place, which I don't think I can view in any way here. No, I don't think I can. It comes with a very low amount of upgrades in the first place, which means it can be upgraded further, but at the beginning, the energy upgrades cost more money than they would normally, which slows things down. It is a really powerful ship, though, if you can get it working right. I beat the game with it. Not on hard, though. Just on easy. Your Manta ships. I was never able to beat the game with the Gila Monster. Gila Monster is an awkward ship. I don't like it, personally. Boarding is a is difficult. Before Advanced Edition came out, you could send your boarders over to the enemy ship, b send them straight into the enemy weapons room, and the enemy crew would spawn at their cockpit and then around it. So when combat first started, you'd have people who were here, 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 and maybe here, and then they would run to their weapons bay. In Advanced Edition, they now start where they need to be. So even if you teleport instantly into the enemy weapons, you're going to have people there. So you're not going to be able to damage the weapons. So while your boarders are over there fighting, possibly on a ship that has like anti-intruder drones or, you know, clone bays or med bays, you're still taking fire from the enemy ship. So boarding to me is not as great as it used to be. Uh, that said, the Gila Monster is okay. Uh, you have a hard time venting over here. Venting over here, though, is all right. <laughs> You've got one Angie for, you know, spot repairs since your Mantis are horrible at repairs. Your med bay is sort of far away from your teleporter, at least further enough that it's annoying and noticeable, but not really a problem. Basic laser is basically worthless by itself. You only have three weapon slots. You also have a small bomb for, I guess, knocking out enemy weapons if you can, or knocking out their med bay or something along those lines. Uh, if you really need to, you can use the small bomb to knock out enemy shields and then use the basic laser to whittle them down oh so slowly. Usable and useful when you're fighting uh, AI drones. Mantis pheromones make your crew members slightly faster, but I think that's pointless. I just don't like this ship. The Basilisk is your uh, premier boarding ship, I think. It's got a great layout. Wings are right up here. Four spot clone bay, which are, I'm sorry, four spot teleporter, which are rare, right next to your med or clone bay. 
all of your important stuffs are like in nice one spot. You can vent, you can vent, you can vent, you can vent. Good layout, good venting options. I like the design of the ship. Problem is, you start with two crew members, which makes a boarding party kind of difficult and also makes the four teleporter kind of like ironic at the beginning. Also, you have to keep at least one of them on the cockpit so that he can, you know, do the jump first, and then you have to run them over manually, which is a pain. No weapons. So, when you run into those AI drones, what you have to do is pop the boarding guy over there and watch as he slowly walks across the AI drone, knocking one compartment out and then stands around waiting for it to slowly regenerate. You can spend 10 minutes in a, comp in a battle. He does, however, help you with your actual boarding when you use the mantises. Uh, mantis pheromones are still pointless. Uh, defense drone helps you not die against enemy missiles and whatnot, and, you know, is decent. Uh, noticeable thing about this ship, though, is it comes, it's, I think, the only ship that starts with two shield bubbles. Barriers, as they call it here, but, yeah. It's a decent ship. It just has a hard start. The Theseus, Thesis, Theseus, who knows? is another ship I don't like. You've got the four uh, teleporter, which is great. Clone Bay, which is great, although I th think I prefer med bays for boarding parties, regardless of the benefits of med bays. Uh, large empty section in the back, layout that I'm not a big fan of. Uh, venting options, I guess, that I wouldn't really use because they vent into where you could potentially have crew. Venting over here and over here is nice. Venting's actually pretty good in this ship. <laughs> Big problem with it is, again, you've got the four-person teleporter and only two people that you would be boarding with, because you're definitely not boarding with your Engi. Uh, problem is, you got a Lannis crew member and a Mantis. You want to teleport both of them in, but you don't want them both in the same room in the enemy ship, which means you got to pull one of them out and then hope that the enemy decides to go one-on-one -on -one and not two-on-one and zero on the other one or something along those lines. You also can't keep the Lantis guy in the teleporter room because it'll drain the air out of it and then your Mantis guy will die. It's just a minor inconvenience, but it's annoying. Your weapons are pointless. You've got a stun bomb and a lock bomb, which I guess helps for certain situations. The problem is they're both on long cooldowns and they're both not great. And then you got Mantis Ferments. I don't like this ship. I did somehow manage to beat the game with it, though. Slug Cruisers. The Man of War. Shipped using the anti-bio beam. I actually really like the Man of War. <coughs> Slug repair gel, let me get this out of the way, is on all of them, I think. Yeah. It repairs hull breaches automatically. It's useful. I sell it. I'd rather have my augment slot for something that's actually important, though. And I'd rather have money at the beginning of the game, so I sell it. Two slug crew members is a little harsh at the beginning. Uh, two crew members just in general is kind of harsh. Especially when one of them doesn't have any kind of special gimmick. On the other hand, two slug crew members makes your ship immune to mind control. Uh, venting is kind of hard. Layout is okay, but you can only vent here and here, which means up here is really hard to vent if you have problems. Um, not a bad ship, though. The, uh, weapon layout, though, is your important thing here. The anti-bio beams, two energy, and then the breach bomb, one, and the dual shot laser are both one, and you start with three. So that means you can either, you can have any combination of two of these up and running. Breach bomb for knocking breach bomb, which is also on a nine second charge, which makes it decent. Breach bomb for knocking out enemy shields or knocking out enemy weapons, uh, and then you can follow up with the anti bio beam or breach bomb for just dealing extra damage to the enemy crew and trying to make them suffocate. Dual lasers for taking out shields and opening up for the anti bio beam, so you can crew kill the crew, or knocking out their weapon systems or so on. Or if there's no crew to kill, or for some reason you're not confident you can do it, breach bomb plus dual lasers to knock out weapons and, you know, just kill the enemy ship faster. Uh, anti bio beam is actually pretty fun to use, but also kind of annoying. For example, let's say I have a guy here, and then I have a guy here running on my, uh, my weapons, and I get shot with a bio beam. So you run the bio beam from here to here. It hits this guy, it goes across, it hits that guy. The game, however, prioritizes certain rooms for the AI higher. So if you fire the beam from this, well, this direction actually, if you fire the beam from this guy to here to here, and it kills that one first, this guy might decide he wants to run into the weapons, move to this square, so when the beam's coming through, it misses him. It's annoying, but you gotta just be aware of it. 
Stormwalker. I hate this ship. It's a boarding ship. That's its gimmick. You board here, but it's got no bed bay. You need to heal yourself with this healing burst bomb that takes an 18 seconds to cool up, uh, charge up, and then can miss. You can you can fire it at your own ship though, and then you can waste your valuable missiles. Your other weapon is an Artemis, which uses missiles. So you're very missile dependent for dealing damage, knocking out shields or weapons or clone bays or med bays, and then also for healing with the stupid healing burst. Nothing about this ship makes me want to use it. It's got an okay layout, if not if it's kind of big. Okay venting options, but its gimmick is just bad, and slugs don't make for good borders. The Aerialomax, Aerialomax, or however you want to pronounce that, is actually one of my favorite ships. I like the color. Yellow's cool. Unlike that, and that. And I didn't show these ones, but there's those. Chernikov looks cool. Alright. Three slugs. It's okay options. Uh, a non-symmetrical design, which makes my head explode because of my OCD. Everything looks the same. Vent, 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 vent. Vent, vent. No vent. Makes my head explode. Uh, your doors are already upgraded. I believe that's the case with all the slug ships, though. Which helps them defend against borders. Uh... Chain Burst Laser is actually a pretty nice weapon, uh, firing eventually, starting at 16, but getting down to 7s. So, uh, I do actually like that weapon. Um, layout is not bad on this ship. It is, as I mentioned, good for venting. Uh, really easy to, like, defend against borders with. Uh, the trick to this ship, though, is the clone bay, the small one, which you don't want to swap to a med bay because of that. And then the mind control and the hacking module. Those two things combined are actually pretty powerful under some circumstances. Uh, one of the things you can do with this ship, and I think it makes it unique, is you can hack the enemy uh, oxygen, drain their oxygen, fire your chain burst, knock out their oxygen system, and then when somebody goes over there to repair it, mind control him so that he starts you know, running interference for you. Uh, with this ship, it's actually really, well, not easy, but it's pretty possible to make a ship that's just designed over killing the enemy crew just like the Man of War is with the Bio Beam. Except instead of hitting them with an actual weapon, you're just draining their oxygen out. Alright. So that's our Slug ships, our Manta ships, and our Zoltan ships. And then that leaves us with, I think, four more. The Rock ships for next time, the Stealth Cruiser, the Lannis, and the um, Crystal Cruisers. I'll do all of them in one since these last two are only, uh, you know, only have two different versions. Alright, that's part two. Thanks for tuning in again.